Hi everyone, welcome back to the Gilbert F. Stansel Musical Instrument Museum here at Blue Lake Fine Arts Camp. My name is Dave Bauer, I'm the curator of the museum. Um, we're taking sort of a bird's eye view here of the Steinway B piano uh, in the keyboard room at the museum. Have you ever taken an opportunity to get a really good look inside a piano? It's an incredibly complex and diverse instrument. It's got a huge number of parts on the inside of it. Um, if you've ever been to the museum and heard me give a presentation, you know that I talk a lot about how musical instruments started out by being fairly simple, basic um, instruments, and over time gradually began to um, accumulate more and more uh, mechanical sophistication until we get to the incredibly uh, versatile but also incredibly sophisticated and mechanically complex instruments that we know of today. Well, the piano is certainly no different. Um, so let's take a little bit of, of a look at where the piano came from, and then we'll come back and, and take a look at this one. I'm here with an instrument that uh, probably most of you know is called a harpsichord, and it's essentially an early ancestor of the modern grand piano. And even though it has very similar looking features, uh, the mechanical action of producing the sound is quite a bit different. The harpsichord was the most popular keyboard instrument in the Baroque period, which is the period of Johann Sebastian Bach. Uh, it lasted from approximately 1600 to 1750 or so. Um, when you push down on a key on this, there's sort of a seesaw action that pushes up on a part which is called a jack, and the jack has a tiny little piece of feather, uh, now plastic, that would pluck the string as it went by. So there's a much more delicate brittle sound to the harpsichord. And I've got the, the uh, music rack and part of the cover off to show you the interior. And I've pulled one of these jacks out to show you what it looks like. You've got just this little tiny piece of plastic here that I hope you can see um, that plucks the string as it goes by. And then when you take the, your finger off the key, the jack falls back down and this little piece of felt actually mutes the string and stops the sound. Um, the harpsichord, um, uh, was, as I say, was the most popular keyboard instrument in the Baroque period, but Baroque composers were beginning to write more complex music and began to find the harpsichord a little limiting. So they began to look for more expressive instruments. And around the year 1700, a harpsichord manufacturer in Italy made, named Cristofori um, actually invented what was essentially the beginnings of the modern piano because it, the strings were hammered rather than being plucked. Uh, and over the years, more and more um, um, uh, modifications were made to the piano. Uh, it was increased in size and range and expressive potential by adding pedals and things like that until we got to the modern piano. So let's take a look at uh, one of our instruments in the collection that, that's an example of a modern piano. So here we are back at our Steinway B piano. I've just come from the 57 key harpsichord to the 88 key piano. And in doing so, I've skipped over a lot of detail uh, that's included in the development of keyboard instruments from early instruments like the harpsichord to the instrument like the modern piano. But what happened over the course of that time is that keyboard instruments increased in complexity, and that was because they needed to, um, they needed to expand the expressive potential of the instruments. So um, as, we, as we go along, you add things like pedals, um, and you add range to the piano, both on the bass and the treble end, until we get to the modern piano. Now the harpsichord um, had one string per pitch, so 57 strings in that harpsichord that we were just sitting at. Uh, but the piano has 88 keys and two or three strings per pitch, so that's an enormous amount of string tension that's placed on the body of the instrument. So, it only, so though not only did the piano become more complex, but it also became a heavier, sturdier instrument. But the, the, the bulk of the increase in the complexity of the instrument is in the action. And here's a model of, of just one key inside the piano. It's a cross section. So imagine this times 88, and you know how much complexity there is and how many moving parts there are inside a piano. But basically what's happening, if you can see this here, is that over here I'm pushing down on the key, and notice that the other end is the hammer, and this metal bar is, is substituting for the string. So when I push down on this key, the hammer goes up. But notice, I'll hold down the key, but the hammer has struck the uh, string and bounced back. And that particular type of action is called double escapement, and it's what allows for both rapid repeated notes on the piano and the variety of dynamics and articulation that are possible on the piano. So that you can go from 
um, very soft, delicate sounds to much louder, much louder, more percussive sounds. And thank you to uh, Teresa Grijalva, who made this piano action model for the museum. Um, so this, is, this um, is the same as other instruments in the museum that I've talked about before, where we go from, their, their development goes from much uh, more simpler, more basic instruments to much more complex, but also musically sophisticated instruments. We look forward to seeing you all back here in 2021, and we hope that you're well and safe. Please keep an eye right here on our social media pages this summer for more really interesting content. And thanks for watching this virtual arts video brought to you by Blue Lake Fine Arts Camp. Bye-bye.